Hey everyone, we're here at the New England Wireless and Steam Museum in East Greenwich, Rhode Island. Just want to give everyone a quick walking tour around as we prepare for our annual event, the original Yankee Steam Up, that won't be able to be held this year due to coronavirus concerns. Just want to give everybody a quick walking tour around, get everybody oriented a bit, um, and give people out of the area some ideas to what we have here, people that might not ever be able to come to the museum. So we have our meeting hall over here to the right, the uh, maze building in this shot on the right, heading over to the steam building, Merriam Steam Building, named for the museum's founder. Interestingly, steam was not the first thing on display here, as much as it's our main event. Um, it was primarily the uh, New England Wireless Museum originally. Steam was added a couple years later. So here we are, let's just take a quick walk inside of the steam building, kind of give everyone a little sense of all the things that we have here around the museum. And as the weeks go by, as we get closer to the event, I think we're going to do a little um, in-depth exploration of some of the items here. Um, but first, a quick overview. This building, the steam building, houses some large mill, industrial scale mill engines, reciprocating steam engines. Here we have the Corliss engine, the only known Corliss engine built while George Corliss was alive, still under steam today, that we know of. A Harris here that has a um, variant of the Corliss valve technology. Here we have um, a couple of Armington and Sims, one that was a generator for the Hartford Electric Light Company in Hartford, Connecticut. Our green engine here, also made in Rhode Island, that um, has a very interesting um, slide valve technology, but uses an advanced cutoff mechanism similar to the Corliss or a very different design from the Corliss, trying to achieve the same thing. Our triple expansion Harishoff engine here. And a whole variety of smaller models. Uh, not models, but actual steam engines. Everything in the building here does work. And it's exactly what we exhibit at Steam Up every year. Um, again, with it not being held in person this year, we do plan on hosting an annual... a uh, an, online version of that event on YouTube on October 3rd this year. We hope everyone can join us. Um, and we will be showing all of these engines and a lot of the wireless technology exhibits and explanations on everything actually working on that day. And again, before we even get to that point, I'll be doing a little bit more in-depth explanation as well. For now, let's head over into the wireless building, just across the way here. Give you some ideas to what's in this building as well. Many of the exhibits in the museum have been largely untouched for some 25, 35, perhaps even more years. And this year, with the um, visitors not being on site as planned, we've taken the initiative to start doing some renovations and start improving upon the the displays in some cases. The maze building in particular is uh, seeing its first major renovation in all these years since it was built. So here we have some of the display windows in the wireless building. One of the uh, changes that was made just a few years ago, improvements, was the uh, installation of an audio narration on each one of the windows done by one of our volunteers here. Let's just miss, listen to the very first one. The sound of text messaging. No, not from cell phones. This is the sound of the electric telegraph, the first form of electrical telecommunication. In the early 1800s, many scientists experimented with various kinds of telegraphs. But in 1837, Samuel Morse developed and patented an electric telegraph. And with the help of his assistant, Alfred Vail, instant long distance communication was born. One of the buttons here does actually activate the sounder that's in that display. And we have a variety of other 
topics about wireless communications uh, or the evolution of wireless communications here on the various display windows in this particular section. Perhaps in one of the upcoming videos, I'll have one of our wireless experts here to talk a bit more in depth about each one of these and show it. Certainly on Steam Up Day, we will be giving tours of this building. In this case, again, virtual tours of this building. Um, this one here, one of my favorite displays, a window that shows that uh, light is electromagnetic and can be attracted with a magnet. You see the beam bending toward the, uh, toward the magnet there. Something very simple for people to uh, try to conceptualize some of these early principles that people were studying and that uh, became everything that we have today in the world of wireless communications to go from a telegraph to a cell phone in the course of 180 years. Let's take a quick walk around the other side of the building here. Have a lot more, um, you know, household type radios here in this section of the building. And again, with any amount of luck, um, next year we will uh, be able to get everyone back on site so that they can actually appreciate all that we have in person, see it for themselves. We did have plans this year of opening to the public uh, every Saturday through the summertime. But unfortunately, nature had other plans and we've been forced to stay closed entirely. Steam up day for anyone that uh, has never been before. The museum goes from a sleepy, hidden away gem in the rural parts. Again, East Greenwich, Rhode Island, we are uh, 50 or 60 minutes from Boston and approximately three hours from New York City. A relatively sleepy place to approximately 900 people with outside exhibitors and visitors and long-standing visitors, people who've been coming here their entire lifetimes, uh, coming back to visit us each year on that particular day when it gets quite, quite crowded. Let's take a quick walk over to Station PJ for the final stop on our tour. We do have uh, the shop building, again, the maze building, and the um, uh, meeting hall also on the grounds here. Uh, we won't be touring tonight, but here is the Massey Station PJ. It was down on the shore at Point Judith, Rhode Island. It was moved here to the site in 1982 and is a National Historic Landmark. All of the original wireless equipment from this building that was removed through the course of the decades as the station fell out of use was in the possession of the Massey family, the descendants of the uh, gentleman who actually developed this radio system, Walter Massey. And the equipment was then donated to the museum after the building was moved here to the site. That's all contained up on the second floor that was actually the uh, wireless station. The first floor here was actually originally living quarters for the family that lived here to operate the station. And we'll get into that radio equipment upstairs, a spark gap transmitter, on another video. For today, that's, that's it. We hope everyone can join us on October 3rd for um, our, our broadcast, a live broadcast of a virtual steam up. And um, again, more in-depth videos in the weeks to come. For now, thanks for watching. Signing off from the New England Wireless and Steam Museum in East Greenwich, Rhode Island.